Let's see a few examples of what you can accomplish with the new remote scripting interface for Plexis Monopile Designer. So in this first example, we'll be looking at basic functionality. We'll start a new project, we'll import two previously calibrated death variation function files, and we will use them to configure a layered soil profile. We will then input the parameters of the analysis, the geometry of the pile, and the workload, and we will analyze that in the one-dimensional kernel. Once this is done, we will use that same information to generate a 3D design verification model. And using the Plaxis Python scripting API, we will then script some modifications to that model. Here, we will change the color of the topmost layer to a nice sequent black. And we will change the name of the material to I did it, because we can. We will then save those changes and calculate the design verification model in Plexis 3D. Once both models have been calculated, we will then query results of both. And we will show them in the screen. So if we move into Plexis Monopile Designer and run this script, we see how it's calling Plexis 3D already, which means that uh, the 1D calculation has already been completed and it's now generated the 3D design verification model. And it will now save and close the file. And call on Plexis 3D for a second time to apply the scripted modifications that we included. So here it is, our topmost soil layer has turned black and we have renamed it to I did it. So once the desired modifications have been saved, it will then calculate the 3D model. So finally, it finished calculating. It's displaying in this screen the different outputs that we required. Mind that uh, instead of displaying, we could also have exported them to an intermediate file or save them as a variable in our script. And here we see the user interface updated with the characteristics of our analysis, the completed 1D analysis, and the completed 3D analysis. Now that we've covered the basic functionality, we can start looking into more interesting things. So let's say that instead of looking at one pile geometry and comparing it with uh, one 3D model, we want to look at several possible geometries and look at results in aggregate. So for example, we could be defining a parametric study on the embedded length in which we will open a new file so that we don't uh, delete the progress that we've done until now. And we will import the same depth variation functions and define the same soil profile. Only now the geometry of our analysis will be defined through variables. And we will also define uh, several uh, thickness segments so that we can vary the uh, shell thickness along the length of our pile. Not only that, but we would like that uh, at the end of the pile, at the tip, 
we always have a length with a constant thickness so that it doesn't matter what is the global embedded length uh, that tip will always have the same constant length and thickness so with that we can start uh, slicing our search space into a given step so we will explore different lengths from our minimum and our maximum at a fixed advancement rate and we will run one dimensional analysis for each of them so this is what we do in this for loop for each of those geometries we modify the geometry we calculate run the one dissolver and then we get the results which we will append into lists the results that we're interested in are the embedded length, the displacement, the horizontal displacement at ground level, and the rotation at ground level. We'll save those results into a CSV file for future treatment, but we're also interested in plotting them side by side so that we can visually uh, check them against the different failure conditions that we have defined. So let's see if we now run this script. We can see how the plot appeared with the values of the displacement at Madline for a constant workload and varying embedded length. And also to the side, the values of the rotation at man lane uh, for the same range of embedded lengths. And we can quite easily, quite quickly check where those lines cross the failure conditions that we've imposed. 10% uh, of the diameter for the displacement and 2 degrees for the rotation. So that we can uh, quickly zero in in what's our most restrictive case. So let's look up into a final example. Uh, here, let's say that uh, we have soil data, either in open ground cloud, leapfrog, or, or in any other form. Here, I have this interpreted CPT in leapfrog, which I would like to export into a, um, into a CSV file. We'll name my file borehole intervals so then I can get into my next script and take it as an input here the first thing that we will do is we will define a mapping between the soil units that we interpreted in our uh, leapfrog model and uh, some calibrated depth variation functions for the numerical based design case or some of the published uh, PISA models for the rule based design case. So that then with our CSV file open we read each of the of the lines of that file and then we generate the Plexis Monopile Designer stratigraphy as a function of the mapping that we previously defined. So that being said, we can go into Monopile Designer and run this script. So here we have as outputs the different uh, lengths that uh, the different depths and uh, types of soil that we have read and if we close this we can check how we imported the full set of curves and we defined the stratigraphy as a function of our mapping so here we could start creating the pile geometry and the structural analysis and the structural properties and analyze the pile in that location Needless to say, uh, if we have 100, 200 locations in our uh, wind farm, we can automate the full process so that we move from one location to the next, run all the analysis there, 
and then repeat the process for the next location so that we can start automating processes throughout the entire offshore wind farm.